To assemble or not to assemble? That is a question. Hello everybody, I'm Sunshine and today we're going to be looking at the Mulholland Drive inspired box that I designed. We're going to look at how I designed it and how I chose between a print in place and a assembled version. And also we're going to be looking at how you can use one of these to rivet an assembly that you have. In traditional engineering, you manufacture a product by designing every single component, then manufacturing them, and finally uh, assembling the product as you want it. However, with 3D printing, we have the possibility to not only produce the parts, but also assemble them at the same time. Initially, uh, my brother and I designed this box to look as close to the one in the movies as possible. We decided to do this by printing the lid and the body separately. However, once we had the two parts, we had to fuse them together somehow, and we didn't want any nasty seams or like glue hanging out somewhere. So what we decided to do was to rivet them together with a piece of filament. For this, we used a blowing iron and a piece of baking paper. To do this, we took a piece of filament, put the baking paper on one side and the iron on the other one, and heated up the filament so we got a nice rivet style plateau. Afterwards, we repeated it on the other side, and we got this nice, flush, completely unseparable assembly. However, everybody wants to know what's in the box. Oh, that's the wrong movie. Anyways, actually just the subscribe button, but you know. Once we finished that one, I decided like, hey, you know what would be really cool? If we could just print this and take it off the bed and it would work. And that's exactly what we did with this one. This one prints like this, and theoretically once it's done printing, you can just pick it up, break it a little bit loose, and suddenly you have a box that locks and opens, and I mean, it's pretty cool. And the reason I did this was because a lot of the times you can find really cool designs on the internet, However, then halfway through you realize ah, you need a bearing or you need an axle or some screws that you don't have. And it's not always given that everybody has an iron or, you know, it would probably work with a soldering iron as well. But, you know, it's not always given that everybody has everything at home. So that's why I find it's really important to make versions of your designs that anybody can build at home. So, to avoid to having to print this for like, what, 8 hours, and then end up with the thing that you can't break loose, I designed this little test piece that includes both the hinge and the locking mechanism, which are the two most difficult parts to print. Uh, so what you do is you print this with your desired settings, and then you check, mm, does it break loose? If it, uh, if it does, then perfect, and you can print the whole thing without wasting time. Uh, and if not, then you can go back and tweak your printer until, you know, it prints loose. Oh, hello there. So, Mr. Caliper is back next week, because Sunshine and he are working on some really jaw-dropping videos. So, if you enjoyed this one, feel free to subscribe, and see you soon. Bye!